Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. I hope you had a great week. If you have been following the Facebook feed, you know that we have decided as a group to extend the design challenge that we talked about last week. If you remember, we were coming together as a group to redesign this clutch here, which the purpose of is to hold medication for um, people who need to carry an EpiPen for allergies. And then as the discussion evolved, we also realized that this is an ideal size for an insulin pump and um, asthma inhaler. So that is great because now this one design is serving even a wider audience. So the incentive for participating in the design challenge was, besides it's a nice thing to do of course, was that you would be entered to win this priority mailbox full of designer quilting cotton remnants, which are all left over from the bags that I designed at Watermelon Wishes. So if you enter the design challenge, I will draw one winner from everyone who enters at random and that lucky duck will receive a box of fabric. And then also I was just at random choosing one of our happy mail winners. So because the deadline is extended on the design challenge until next Friday, 12 o'clock Eastern time, I do want to go ahead and announce the happy mail winner today. And then I want to show you how much fabric actually fits in one of these boxes and what a fabulous deal this is. So before I show you what I put inside of here, let me tell you who is winning this. Congratulations, Miss Lisa Osborne. You are the winner. Lisa, I'm going to send you an email. If you will reply to that email with your shipping address, I will put this in the mail on Monday to you. And let me show you all of the goodies that you are receiving. now. To make this extra special, you know uh, from past posts that I have a very large collection of fabric that has since been discontinued and I still have cut yardage of that. So in Lisa's box, I'm including two yards of Tina Givens fabric that has since been discontinued and it is truly gorgeous. She is a super talented artist. So that's one yard and this is the second yard that I chose for Lisa. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and dump out all Lisa's scraps onto the clean rug and then I will pack them back up so you can see how much fits in here. This is just a little bit of the fabric that Lisa's going to receive. Because I have so much fabric, I did want to put together some boxes and offer them for sale. This is just exclusive offer for our SoSpire community. If you quilt, if you enjoy patchwork bags, these scraps are absolutely perfect. They're all rotary cut. They're various sizes, as you can tell. You know, some are larger, some are small. There's lots of really fun prints in there. So I put together 10 packages that I can sell and those are listed in my Watermelon Wishes Etsy shop. The priority mail medium flat rate boxes cost me about $14 in shipping. So I've incorporated that $14 into the price. And so right now those are listed, 10 of them, um, which is what I think will par down this collection of mine quite a bit for 
and if you're interested you can snatch one of those up and for those first 10 boxes I'm going to include two yards of these discontinued prints so you're almost right there at the $29 just with the two yards of fabric so the purpose of me doing this really is to avoid having to throw this fabric in the garbage. I just don't have a nice way to get all of these smaller pieces organized and I really want this studio to be fabulous because we're getting ready to announce some in-studio workshops and I want this space to be nice and organized and a beautiful place for people to create. So I do need to part with some of these remnants. So if you're interested in that, you just can, I'll leave the link in the show notes or you can just find Watermelon Wishes on Etsy and you'll see those boxes. But it is a really is a fabulous value. Um, now I also want to tell you about a concept that I am working kind of, I haven't come up with a real official name and if you all can help me because you're fabulous at ideas um, and brainstorming. I would really appreciate it. I have, you know, a home studio and then I have this amazing space and my intention was to combine both spaces and then our youngest is nine years old and then our eldest is 23. He doesn't require much of me anymore but we still have the two, the nine-year-old and the 16-year-old at home and sometimes, you know, with children they get sick or something comes up and I have to adjust my schedule and I can't it's not always practical for me to be here so um, I, I think I'm gonna need to keep a small sewing space at home just to keep that balance between work and family that is really is necessary for me so I'm trying to create and this is what I need your help like a minimalistic sewing concept. So it would have everything I need to run my businesses and then it would still look pretty enough that it could be because I don't have my own sewing room with a door at home. It's actually in our living space. So it would need to be attractive enough that um, no one was embarrassed by my little sewing nook. So what I did, and I have some pictures to show you, is I've, I've begun sorting and purging all of that stuff from home and only leaving the bare minimums that I would need. And that idea or concept is kind of evolving for me because what I realize, especially with this move and then showing up here every day to this huge space and trying to, again, make it beautiful so I can invite people in, I realize how easy it is for us to con you know, collect way more than we can consume as creative people. And I, my fear is that many of you, myself included, have collected so much that we're kind of pushing ourselves out of our own creative spaces that it's almost too overwhelming because when I think about like organizing all this fabric, that is overwhelming to me and some of you may be in the same position. So I want to refine this minimalistic crafter, creator, sewer workspace and then at the very least, if you can take that concept when we get this all worked out and create just even a little corner that embraces that minimalistic concept, then that may make you want to spend more time creating, I'm guessing, because after I pulled all the extra out of the home space, I was like, wow, this is nice and fun and maybe I really do want this here. So I still have the big cart that you'll see in the photo. I think it's going to come here because it's a really fabulous counter height cart and it's great for extensive sewing because the height is right for cutting. It would be great for a workshop. So I think we're going to bring that out here tomorrow and then I'm going to go shopping for a much smaller desk which I will be sure to share with you. 
and at home I'll basically just have a very small collection of fabric um, and the tools that I absolutely need, my favorite machine, which if anybody's curious, is a Janome DC 2012. I've had it now for since 2012. And I have only made two repairs to it, both of which I was able to do myself and I ordered on Amazon. Um, a new bobbin case for the bobbin because the tension got so wonky and I just was taking a chance. I didn't actually know that would fix it and it did. That was less than 20 bucks. I just popped it in and the tension and the stitching was perfect and has been ever since. And then the second thing was I needed to replace the light and my husband uh, was looking at it and he goes, oh, those are automotive, you know, like tail light lights. You can get those at Walmart for four bucks. So that was for two. So I did that, put in the, you know, it doesn't screw in, but it just pops in light. And I've been sewing full time on that machine ever since. So I love that. I'm going to leave that at home so that when I uh, do need to work from home or I want to sew for us, that I have my favorite machine there. And so that's what I'm working on there on the side and I want to keep you all in the loop because I think a lot of you could benefit from that. Since I founded SoSpire, I have heard from um, more than a dozen people that they're really, they really are embarrassed of their creative space and they have too much in there and they don't know where to start and they can't enjoy it. So I hope that this might be a solution or a new mindset for those of us who've been at this a long time and maybe honestly have more than we can use. So that's that. If, again, if you're interested in the fabric, check it out. It is, re there's a really, really beautiful prints in here and I'd love to keep them, but we've covered that. I can't do it. And I hate to put them in the garbage. I really do. So I hope that you will scoop up those boxes and use them and make something beautiful. Um, the next thing I want to tell you about is I want to try a kind of a new format for our tutorials and this is good timing since we extended the design challenge. I also want to mention quickly with that design challenge the ideas are coming in to enter for that. Just post your photos and a little description of what you changed on the SoSpire Facebook page. I'll put the link also in the notes. The ideas are coming in and you all really are putting a lot of thought into this and this is going to change people's lives for the better. I'm so grateful and so impressed. But what I want to do is some ideas really are magnificent. I want to take what um, our favorite concepts and then we're going to remake that clutch again incorporating your genius ideas. So I just wanted to make sure I told you that too. So that's going to be a tutorial. but. For this new um, format for the tutorials, inspiration just pops into my head like this design came to me like two days ago and I kind of refine it in my brain while I sleep and then one morning I'll just wake up, sketch it out and then run in here super excited like I did this morning and sew it up and then I'll be thrilled and generally I record the tutorial right after I make the prototype and then just push it out to all and you make some suggestions on how to improve it and it's over, we're off to the next thing. I want to insert a pause button in there. I want to show you what my creative genius came up with, tell you all the features of it, then let you make your suggestions to improve it. I'll take my favorites and then I'll record the tutorial. So again, we're just taking that idea to the next level and the channel and the tutorials, the quality is going to be drastically improved as a result of your inputs. So let me show you what I came up with for this week. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. How many of you have an awesome, huge tote bag that you adore, but it just becomes an endless jumble of contents because they don't make these bags with very many pockets, right? So I love this bag and I use it as my work bag because I can set it down anywhere. It has a zipper on the top. I don't have to worry about anything, you know, flipping out of it when I'm driving. And 
again, I just felt, I feel like it's always disorganized without pockets. So I came up with a purse organizer that fits exactly into this tote bag. And I'm going to pull it. Well, I'm going to show you. I have more photos too of how this works, but I have everything in there nice and organized. And then this little organizer has two very shallow handles on it. So you can pull that out of the bag. Like let's say you need to use your bag for something else and um, you can just take that right out. So we're going to go over the features of that, but then I want to show you just on the inside of this bag, there's you know, just basically a big open compartment, one zipper pocket, and two very, very shallow pockets. But it's a huge tote, so if you fill that up, nothing, of course, is going to be organized. So what I did with this here was to create this little organizer, and inside of this I have a journal, a full set of pens, my MacBook, a little cosmetic bag, a key fob, my camera, my headphones, my charger, my journal, a book, and my planner. I have a spare set of batteries on this side for the camera, and then my glasses. So a lot of stuff is in here. It's actually very heavy, hence the um, shallow handles on that so I could reinforce those good. So we got a full length exterior pocket, side pocket, side pocket, two way divided front pocket, and then inside are um, two side pockets and then four interior pockets, two on the front and two on the back. And the whole thing measures 11 inches across the top, 14 inches across the base, and then the height is 9 inches and the depth is 5 inches. So I'll show you some photos of that so you can give the design some more thought. If you have ideas or suggestions or other features that you need incorporated into this so that it works well with your bag, just comment on that, send me an email, or reach out on Instagram or Facebook, and I'm gonna collect all your fabulous ideas and then remake this design for you this coming week. Right now it's on the schedule for Thursday. So um, that'll be Thursday the 10th. So you have until then to give me your ideas. If you can submit them by the 9th, that'd probably be good because I want to sketch it out and make a prototype too. So I think that's all I have for you this week. That was a lot. Yeah. So I will see you soon. Just a few days. We're going to remake this tutorial. Um, keep those design challenge ideas coming in for the clutch. So that's all. Until we meet again, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Thanks so much, everyone.